Welcome back to another Max Deck Tech. Today we're doing another 10 in, 10 out upgrade guide for a precon. The precon in question is Elven Council from the new Lord of the Rings set. The deck out of the box has a few different themes we can build around, including elves, scrying, and voting, with a small subset of those cards focused on casting some large CMC spells. Uh, before we dive on in, if you enjoy these upgrade guides and deck techs, please consider subscribing to the channel to help us grow. We have a few choices for who our commander is going to be, starting with the face commander, Galadriel Elven Queen, who is looking to see us tempted by the ring or gaining card advantage. But which one we get is ultimately up to the table, and in my experience, you'll be drawing a card every time it's taken to vote. Sardan the Shipwright is another option which utilizes the voting mechanic and leans a bit more towards Group Hog allowing any player who receives a vote to draw a card per vote and anyone who didn't receive a vote to cheat a creature into play. Everon to the White Council is another Votes Matters commander but unlike the first two choices will only trigger on ETB. Bud will either allow you to steal creatures from your opponents or pump your entire field so the limitation very understandable. Gandalf, Westward Voyager, cares about those big spells and lets you potentially copy cards off the top of your opponent's decks. And rounding off the bunch, we have Radagast, Wizard of Wilds, who also cares about those big spells, but rewards you a little bit more reliably with some token creatures instead. While any of these would make for a fine commander, I think the face commander, Galadriel Oven Queen, makes the most sense for the way I plan on upgrading this deck. Casting big spells is nice, but takes time to ramp into, and we're going to focus much more on the scrying mechanic with our changes. Let's go over what we're taking out to make room for more, more elven scrying value. Leading the pack is Arbor Elf, who couldn't tap a forest by tapping himself down. You know, if we were going to be playing some enchantment style ramps on our forests, I feel like he'd have earned a place to stay, but that's just not the case with this deck. And so Arbor Elf has to go. Colossal Whale is up next, and is one of our repeatable removal pieces that comes in the deck, making it hard to cut, especially since it has Island Walk. Ultimately, Colossal Whale just doesn't fit the theme of the deck, which is Elves and Scrying. Our boy Gandalf is actually up next on the shopping block. Uh, he cares about casting large spells, and while we definitely have a few left in the deck, it's just not what our main focus is. I'm also not sure how reliable that trigger is, right? It, it depends on what's on top of our opponent's libraries. So... You know, I mean, just, he doesn't, he doesn't fit. He don't fit. Can't be helped. Hornet Queen is up next to be taken out. Again, just for not fitting the theme. She's not an elf. She doesn't let us scry. Four Death Touchers off a single cast is definitely a wall that'll keep our opponents at bay, but we'd rather dig for finishers than sit behind a wall. Learn from the past. Could be Graveyard Recursion for us, or slow down someone who's using their graveyard as an extra hand. But ultimately, four mana to draw a card is just a bit too steep a price to pay for me. Lignify is an odd removal piece, uh, so you could definitely shut down a utility creature with it. But it just isn't like digging for answers to end the game, and you're ultimately leaving them with a 0 4. Mirror of Galadriel may seem like an odd choice to remove. It has scrying and card draw built into it. We're almost never paying anything close to five mana for the ability. But ultimately, I found something that I feel is just a bit more reliable to take its place. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a minute. Radagast, Wizard of Wilds again, cares about those large spells like Gandalf. It just doesn't really fit what the deck is trying to do, and therefore it was an easy cut. Realm Seekers is a high cost elf that serves the purpose of ramping, but to even have them ramp you once costs a total of 9 mana, 6 to play it, 3 to use the ability. And while there are definitely ways to cheat them out to get good value, he relies on other cards to be good value, and for that reason, Realm Seekers is gone. 
Seeds of Renewal is decent graveyard recursion, often grabbing two cards for four mana, but I have a source of repeatable recursion already in the deck, and it's not in line with the theme. So I know we've already hit, you know, our, our ten cards, but I did swap two more, uh, not including upgrading the lands in the deck. So ten cards in, ten cards out, more like twelve cards in, twelve cards out, uh, but bear with me here. We're taking out Song of Erendil. Uh So it actually stays on theme for that first chapter, right? We're going to scry two, draw two, which is actually pretty decent, I think, for five mana. Following that up, we would create a treasure token, so a little bit of ramp. We'd also get a 2-2 two, two bird. Okay, not bad, not bad. And then we get to put a flying counter on each of our creatures without flying. So this is actually like a little tough to get rid of. Just because the, the evasion from flying, pretty strong. Uh, the card draw and scrying is great for us. The treasure is okay. I mean, like, I'm never going to say no to a treasure. The bird is okay. It's a little too too bird. Uh, so definitely, like, one of my tougher cuts. But, you know, we did take it out. Last up is Woe's Pathfinder, a mana door could give off a single creature at great cost. It didn't have the decency to be an elf. So Woe's Pathfinder, you're the last one out. What cards are taking their place though? Well, we have Arwen Undemil. I'm probably butchering that name. I apologize to any Lord of the Rings fans out there that know how to pronounce it, but I'm not one of them. Uh, but we're getting rewarded for all the scrying that we're doing. And they have an admittedly expensive scry built into them, but if we have some excess mana and we wanted to scry too, we could. Delighted Halfling is up next. Definitely like an MVP from this set. Uh, it really goes in any green deck at this point, I would think. Right? Uh, so they're a mana dork for one. And they could tap for a colorless, or they could tap for any mana color to cast a legendary spell, and it prevents that legendary spell from being countered. Elrond, Lord of Rivendell, joins us next, offering the opportunity to scry when he or another creature ETBs. And if it's the second time that he triggers each turn, we get to be tempted by the ring. So, playing two creatures in an elf deck... You know, in a single turn, not that difficult. Uh, getting tempted by the ring early is going to give us that card advantage through the card, draw a card, discard a card sort of situation. Obviously, you know, being able to make it so our 4-5 commander, you know, for instance, were the ring bearer. Cool. If you have more than 4 power, you can't block her. Requires multiple blocks at that point to kind of stop them. It's a good time. I really like the tempting mechanic. Elrond, Master of Healing, is up next, and he's pumping our board and potentially letting us draw some cards. And again, this is off of scries. So whenever we scry, we get to put a plus one, plus one counter on up, on each of up to X target creatures, where X is the number of cards we looked at while scrying. We're scrying constantly in this deck. So he's going to be pumping up dudes. And whenever one of those dudes that I've now pumped up with Elrond or any other plus one plus one counter shenanigans gets uh, targeted by a spell or ability that opponent controls, we have card advantage. I like it. Speaking of reliable scrying, Elvish Mariner. Uh, so whenever the Mariner attacks, we get to scry one. Not bad. And whenever we scry, we get to tap up to X non-land permanents where X is again the number of cards we looked at while scrying this way. So every single turn this thing attacks, we're at least tapping down one thing. Getting it out of our way, clearing blockers to kind of get in there and finish things off. What's better than one Galadriel? Two Galadriels! Uh, so Galadriel of Lothrain. Uh, so whenever the ring tempts us, if we choose someone that's not this Galadriel, we get to scry three. Fantastic, we like scrying. Uh, and whenever we scribe, we get to reveal the top card of our library. It's a May ability, so we don't have to. If it's a land, 
we get to put it onto the battlefield tapped. So this makes it so we scry three, maybe there's a land and like a card we want to see next. We just slap the land on top, card we want to see next. And if we didn't like the third card, go ahead and, you know, throw it to the bottom or whatever. We ramp, which thins the deck. And, you know, we're just, we're in a good spot. I really like this Galadriel in this deck. We already have a Legolas in the deck, but Legolas Counter of Kills is new. He's here to act as a kind of pseudo-vigilant creature with reach and can get pretty beefy as opponent's creatures die. But why stop at just two Legolas, right? We also have Legolas Master Archer. Uh, so whenever we cast a spell that targets Legolas Master Archer, we get to put a plus one plus one counter on Legolas. And whenever we cast a spell that targets a creature we don't control, Legolas is going to deal damage equal to its power to up to one target creature. We're not really using a lot of cards that are going to target Legolas himself. Maybe one or two. But we are going to have a good handful of things that are going to target our opponent's creatures. And when we do so, we get to, you know, just sort of pick some little, little weak boys off, often utility creatures. It's good value. Moving out of our creature changes and into artifacts, we see two new cards, both leaning into our scrying all the time theme. Life Crafter's Bestiary is going to give us a free scry at every upkeep, and let us pay a single green mana to draw a card when we play our creatures. Palantir of Orthane is letting us scry two cards at the end step, so a little less relevant for some of our cards that care about doing it kind of on our turn, but we're also going to get to draw a card or we're going to deal some increased damage over time, right? Starts out with us just mailing a single card, kind of ramps from there, and the CMC of those cards that we're mailing is going to be shot out as damage to an opponent. Lost Isle Calling, right? We are scrying like crazy. Every time we get to Scribe, we have to put a verse counter on Lost, Cal <laughs> Lost Isle Calling. And for 6 mana, we get to exile this, draw a card for each verse counter on it. And if it had 7 or more counters on it, we get to take an extra turn after this one. It is limited to sorcery speed, which makes sense. Um, but honestly, I think that it's moderately plausible to get that extra turn after just having Lost Isle Calling out for like a turn or two. But last up, we have our Sylvan Anthem. Uh, so green creatures we control get a little beefier. A lot of our creatures are green. There's a few of them that are like mono blue. But by and far, they're green or they're Simic, right? So we're beefing all of our dudes. And whenever a green creature ETBs, under our control, we get to scry one. So that's it, guys. Those are the deck upgrades. Do you, did I take out cards you think should have stayed in? Did I miss powerful additions for the deck? Let me know in the comments section down below. And as always, good luck with those builds.